bring our minds, let us bring our heart as well so that we are receptive to his word. I just want us to remember that Mondays, it's Mission Mondays, we are required to go out there and preach the word of God. As much as we are taken through the book Steps to Christ, it's still Mission Monday. Today, you are required to intentionally and purposefully go out there and preach or show the love of God. I do not want to waste um, any more time. I want to give over now to our um, pastor, Dr. Papu, to take us through the lesson you have for us uh, for today. Dr. Papu. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sister Bulela. We welcome, welcome you. Uh, we missed you yesterday. Um, we appreciate your presence. And good morning to everyone. And I uh, trust that you have a beautiful morning uh, and it will be a wonderful one, um, allowing God to guide you today. Um, we back to our book, Steps to Christ. Please read the book. Um, I must confess even before I start, it's, 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 I've read the book. I read the book almost uh, periodically. It's so difficult to put it together and say everything that's in this. I'm going to deal with two chapters now because we need to be done with the book by the end of the week, but you've got to read it. And the, those things that I say, I leave others, the paragraphs I quote, I leave others. So I don't want you to take my statements and, and notes as if that's the word. You've got to go read the book. It, it is such a dynamite, small package, beautiful. It's, it's amazing. It's one of the best written and literatures in Christian um, um, library. It's amazing. Uh, find time to read the book. So today, yesterday we spoke about the love of God. We're going to rush through, but uh, be thorough even as we go. To do, yesterday we spoke about the love of God. And the question that comes up from many people is, if God loves us, why is it that um, there are people who are going to be lost and they'll go to hell? If God loves us, why would he allow us to, to go to hell? It is because God loves us. That's why he can allow us to reject his love. It's a love of God is not obsessed with us. Um, he loves us, he, not because he needs us, we need him. You see, he loves us, not because he's benefiting something from us. He loves us so that we can benefit something from him. So because God loves us, uh, we will go to heaven. Simply, it's clear. It is because God loves us. Otherwise, if God did not love us, we will not make it. And here's another statement that's going to shock some of you. And because God loves us, we will go to hell. Once you see people going to hell, you can exclaim and say, God is wonderful. God is love. Because he has even accepted your rejection. True love doesn't kill the person who rejects it. Um, hell, as you will see um, just shortly, is a place we choose uh, because we do not uh, want God's love. Our, uh, life outside of God's love is hell. When you don't choose God's love, God does not need to come in and, and kill you as if you can live without him. So because God loves us, there's the possibility of heaven and there's a possibility of hell. I know we cannot get into this, but uh, suffice, suffice to say that God loves us enough to accept our rejection. Today, we're looking at two steps. We're going to combine them. And, and, and so pray for me as I try to do the impossible. We're going to combine them. Now, the, the step number two, which is step number one, is um, uh, 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 coming to know that God loves us. That's the basis. That's what propels us. That's what keeps us even in the midst of trials and difficulties, that God loves me, that the one who died for me, God sent his son to die for me. There's no way God will, will say, I, I don't want you to be employed. I don't want your son to be healed. God has done far much more than what we are asking from him without us asking. These other things that you ask are nothing compared to what God he has already given us his son. He can't withhold from us these little things. He loves us. Keep that as the bedrock and the foundation of your Christianity. That's number one. Number two, the second step is that you must acknowledge your need of Christ. If you don't uh, see the importance of Christ, uh, you know, there are Christians who have managed to, to be Christians without Christ. There's nothing like that. So acknowledge your need of Christ. And um, in the Christian journey, in the, in, the, in the Christian life, you cannot be a Christian without Christ. So for us to appreciate that, we need to, first of all, um, ask ourselves this question, what is a sinner? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, um, be quoting paragraphs that explain some of these concepts and I'll give you pages, but they may not be in sync with the page of your book, but this is chapter two. So if you read chapter two, you'll find everything that I'm saying um, today. So what is a sinner? 
sometimes we define a sinner by what he does or by what she does. He drinks, a one who drinks, one who steals, one who lies, one who kills people. But of course, that is what sinners do. Uh, that is what sinners do. That's what a sinner does. He does all those things. But then if that's how we define a sinner, then the question is, what is a Christian? Then a Christian is going to be somebody who does not do those things. So you see, you've defined a Christian without talking about Christ. We have defined a Christian without reference to Christ, and that is um, incorrect. So what is a sinner? And we're not going to get into all this, but you can read it there in Steps to Christ, chapter 2. A sinner is a person with an unrenewed heart, an evil heart. Sorry to say that, but it's true. A sinner is a person with an unrenewed heart. A sinner is a person whose heart is not in harmony with God. A sinner is a person who finds no joy in communion with God. You see, that definition, you can still go to church with an unrenewed heart. You can still go to, get to church with though your heart is not in harmony with God. You can still go to church and not find communion with God. So a, a sinner is not what you do, but you do that because you're a sinner. A sinner is a person, is a being, is a person uh, who is, who is an, who, who as an unrenewed heart. If God could permit to enter heaven um, as a sinner, you'd never find joy. There will be no joy for you in heaven. The glory of God, steps to Christ, page 17, would be to you a consuming fire. You would welcome hell that you may be hidden from the face of him who died to redeem you. You would say, let me go to hell. I cannot stay here. And the reason you are excluded from heaven as a sinner, it is for your favor. It is for your advantage because you would prefer to go to hell than to go to heaven as a sinner. So, so one is not a sinner because oh, they do wrong things, because they commit sin. They commit sin because they are sinners. So you do that because you're already a sinner. So we still have to, to look at that. And it's important because once we do that, then how do you become a Christian? You don't become a Christian by stopping to do certain things. You become a Christian by being born again. As you will see, Job 14, 4 says, who can bring a clean thing out of an, uh, an, an unclean one? In other words, if you are unclean, how can you bring out something that is clean? If you, are, you have an undenewed heart, how can you do things that are clean? Never, John 14, 4 says, Romans 8, 7 says, the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. It just enjoys disobedience. Neither indeed can it be. It is impossible for us of ourselves to escape from the pit of sin in which we are sunk in. So there are sinners with unrenewed heart. There's no way we can take ourselves out. There's no way we can clean our hearts. There's no way we can purify our hearts, except you are born from above. Unless you shall receive a new heart, new desires, new purposes, new motives uh, 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 leading to a new life, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You did not become a sinner. You were born a sinner. If you're going to be a Christian, you must be born. A, it starts with birth. Now, in First 21, it says, in vain are, are men's dreams of progress, in vain all the efforts of uplifting humanity. There is no true excellence of character apart from Jesus Christ. And the only way to God is Christ. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So what is step number two? Step number two is recognizing that you need Christ. Without Christ, you can never be a Christian. You may be a good person. You may be a good um, uh, citizen, but you are not a Christian. A Christian is a person who's born above. A Christian is a person with a clean heart. And because sometimes we can manage to do those good things, because we are created in the image of God, by the way, there are things that we can do on our own strength, because we are, we are not animals, we are created in the image of God, but that does not make you a Christian. That's step number two, recognize you need Christ. Step number three, how shall a man be just with God? How shall a sinner be made righteous? Yes, a sinner needs Christ, but what must he do to be a Christian? Acts 2, verse 37 and 38, repent, Peter says on the day of Pentecost, and be converted uh, X3 verse 19, that your sins may be blotted. So you must repent. Now that repentance therefore is that is that which transforms that heart, uh, that underyoot heart into be a, a, a righteous heart. But then the problem comes in what is repentance? There's true repentance and there's false repentance. Now in page 23, here's a definition of repentance. I wish we could spend time on this. It's a beautiful one. 
Repentance includes sorrow for sin, sorrow for sin one, and a turning away from it, from the heart. We shall not renounce sin unless we see its sinfulness. Until we turn away from it in the heart, there will be no real change in the life. You don't just turn away from sin and go this way while it is still in your heart. You turn away from it in the heart. In other words, this is you, then you will see how this is a, a miracle. To repent is a miracle. It's a gift, by the way. To, to repent is a miracle. I mean, for you to, to develop a heart that hates sin, to see the sinfulness of sin, that is a miracle from God. You may not do sin as we see uh, externally, but you may still love it. You may still have this funny, uh, this beautiful fantasy about sin in your mind. But when you repent, God implants in you a hatred for sin because you see its sinfulness, its ugliness. But false re repentance is when we lament uh, the suffering, the consequences, rather than the sin. You lament the fact that now you are in trouble, but you don't see the sinfulness of sin. You have been caught, now you are asking forgiveness. But next time you are going to be more clever. Now you are in prison, you lament that you have, you have stolen. Next time you are going to be more clever. You still have not seen the sinfulness. You need repentance to see the sinless, sinfulness of sin. Judas Iscariot, after betraying his, his Lord, exclaimed, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. But that was not confession. It was not repentance. He just saw he was experiencing the pain, the suffering of his actions, but he did not see the sinfulness of what he did. Even if he had lived, you'd find a way to do that again. But when the heart yields to the influence, that's page 24, of the Spirit of God, the conscience will be quickened and the sinner will descend for the first time something of the depth and the sacredness of God's holy law. And you'll cry out and say, who shall deliver me from this body of sin? Um, you will see the love of God, the beauty of holiness, the joy of purity. You will long to be cleansed and to be restored to communion with heaven. Now, this is what David saw. This is the experience that David, this is an example um, of, of a genuine repentance. David saw the enormity of his transgression. He saw the defilement of his soul. He loathed his sin. It was not for pardon only that he prayed, but he prayed for the pure heart. Clean, cleanse me, O oh God. Renew my spirit. He longed for the joy of holiness to be restored to harmony and communion with God. And so he confessed. Now that was the language of the soul. Every desire for truth, every desire for purity, every conviction of our own sinfulness is an evidence that the Holy Spirit is working upon our hearts. Jesus said in John 12, 32, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Now, here's the beautiful thing. Sometimes we wonder, we grew up together in church. We grew up together doing this. We, we, we were pathfinders. We were singing in the choir. But some of my friends have, have never become Christians. What happened? Why did others become? Why did others not? Here's the answer, page 27. The sinner, now remember, this is John 12, 32. If I believe it, I'll draw men unto me. But now here's the thing. The sinner may resist this love, this pull. He may refuse to be drawn to Christ. But if he does not resist, he will be drawn to Jesus Christ. A knowledge of the plan of salvation will lead him to the foot of the cross in repentance for his sin, which have caused the suffering of God's dear son. If you don't refuse, you will be drawn. And so those who are not, I'm talking about people who have been exposed to the love of Christ, it is because they have refused. Now, here's the warning. If you see your sinfulness, do not wait to make yourself better. How many there are who think they are not good enough to come to Christ? Do you expect to become better through your own efforts? And some think, or just let, let me just make myself clean and then I'll go to church, I'll go to Christ. Don't wait until you do that. You will wait forever. Let none deceive themselves with the thought that God in his great love and mercy, I mentioned that earlier on, will yet save even the rejectors of his grace. 
the exceeding sinfulness of sin can only be estimated only in the light of the cross. The same cross that reveals the love of God to us is the same cross that reveals his hatred for sin. So in the cross, in that cross, we see how God loves the sinner. In the same cross, we see that God is willing to have his son die on the cross because of, of his hatred for sin. Beware therefore, of procrastination. Do not put off the work of forsaking your sins and seeking purity of heart through Jesus Christ. Time is not um, your friend. Beware of procrastination. But more than that, what you do not overcome will overcome you and work out your destruction. Now, I'm not saying this only to people who must repent people who are not Christians. I'm also referring to those who are already Christians. Some of us are playing with sin and we think the one day we'll just stop and ask God to forgive us. Remember, what you do not overcome today will overcome you and work out your destruction. Now, here's the most uh, heavy, the heaviest uh, paragraph in this chapter, if not in the whole book, in terms of its um, um, enormity, in terms of its weight. It says every act of transgression, every neglect or rejection of the grace of Christ reacts upon yourself. It hardens your heart. It depraves your will. It benumbs your understanding. It not only makes you less inclined to yield, it actually makes you less capable of yielding to the tender pleading of God's Holy Spirit. Then she calls Proverbs 5.22. He says, in all the Bible, there's not a more fearful warning against trifling with evil than the words of the wise men that the sinner, according to uh, Proverbs 5.32, shall be holden with the cords of his sins. You shall be holden with the cords of your sin. Don't play with sin. As you see enormity of sin, as you see yourself as you really are, do not give up to despair. It was sinners that Christ came to save. You know, the devil speaks to you and say, you are a sinner. There's nothing you can do. You've got an evil heart. Say, yes, that is true. But Christ came for sinners such as I. When Satan comes to tell you that you are a great sinner, look up to your redeemer. That's one of, that's the, one of the last paragraphs. When, when he comes to look up to your redeemer and talk of his merits, that which will help you is to look to his light, look to the Bible, acknowledge your sin, but tell the enemy that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners and that you may be saved by his matchless love. So what the devil, even as a Christian, when you have fallen, when you have committed sin and the devil says you are a fake, you are a hypocrite, remember Christ came for sinners like you. If you confess, we'll talk about one of those steps uh, uh, tomorrow. If you confess, he's willing to accept you back. So what is the step number three? Step number three is repentance. And genuine repentance is sorrow for sin and turning away from it in your heart. May God bless us. Let us pray together. Our kind and loving Father, it is such a, a joy to be reminded once more that even as we walk with you, dear Father, there's a provision. If we repent, you'll always be willing to welcome us. Your love for us is greater than the love of our parents. You have a way of being patient with us more than our parents for their wayward children, for their erring children. What a wonderful God we serve. Lord, we pray this morning that through the, your love, let your love shine. Let your love expose the sinfulness of sin. If there are people who are listening here, Lord, and wallowing in, in sin, please, Lord, give us repentance. It is a gift that comes from you. Give us that gift, Lord, so that we can see the sinfulness of what we are doing. There are, there are men and women who have left each other, left their children, who are living a life that they, that they should not be living, who call themselves Christian. And they do so, Lord, because they are blinded by the, by the, by the devil. They don't see the enormity, the sinfulness of sin. Lord, help us to see 
the sinfulness of sin. Give us repentance, Lord, so we can see how ugly sin is. And may we embrace your love. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen.